As you can see, we have an ambitious agenda. We have the added disadvantage that we are not in a room together, having a real human conversation about all the things we'll study. The material in this course is from formal and material logic, from the natural physics we call cosmology, from the ethics, from epistemology, and even from metaphysics. Philosophy is an integrated whole made up of these different branches. We are to study each branch, but never forget that they are integral as branches are to a tree. The form of this class can be conveyed by an analogy to a wheel. Think of what I present here as a hub from which it is your responsibility to install spokes. The hub is the inner part of the wheel, compact and complete, from which extensions are meant to be added. Each spoke can be likened to a line of reasoning extending out from an initial point on the hub. The method for extending the spoke from the hub is human speech, which extends human thought. We are called to extend from the hub by thinking deeply, by meditating, and contemplating the points made in these talks, and then by committing to an effort of study, reading, and discussing. Today, you can meditate on the fact that all created things have natures or formal causality, and all created things have ends or purposes we call final causality. Think with Thomas Aquinas about how important it is to have the end in mind as you cultivate your intellect. Our analogical end is to have a well-formed wheel with strong spokes coming from the hub of truth such that we may be able to use that wheel to travel deeper into realms of reality where the mind and the universe become one. We can meditate on what C.S. Lewis taught us about the two kinds of education and discover whether or not we are in possession of the optative or the Parthenon education. I suggest you look it up and read the essay for yourself. If we are able to discover that our own education was deficient, we can install a new set of spokes onto a new hub of truth, the hub of a proper education cultivated by the method of the dialectic. Finally, we have all the topics of our class set out before us, so look at it as one sees a forest, and for the moment, don't get distracted by a tree or two. What you will need to succeed in this course may be foreign to us, but simple. You must bring yourself, your true self. If you are present as you ought to be, that is the first and foremost consideration. It's, in, it's extremely important to understand that this format me here on the screen and you at home watching, that we are engaged in an artificial and truncated medium. It would be so much fuller, better, and more edifying if we were together in a room, preferably this room. But we are not, and this puts added pressure on both of us. You ought to have a dedicated journal for this course in which you will write down first principles, principles, and key ideas of this course not as in note-taking, but as a reminder of the things you must discuss and wrestle with outside of the class in order to construct the spokes for the hub, which is this course. If you are taking this alone, find someone outside the course with whom you can discuss these topics. If you are taking this with someone else, discuss these things at length. Also, take time alone to wrestle with these things in contemplation. Third, you will need Dr. Kozinski's book called Material Logic. Get the mind right and the rest will follow. This should be like no other class you've ever had, but success or failure will be primarily your responsibility. My job is to make sure I convey as best I can what has been given to me by the great teachers. You are responsible for conveying that to yourself and to your family. We will discuss this several times later in the course, but we have to extricate ourselves from the false dichotomy of nature versus nurture. We will do that by recognizing the difference between potential and actualization. Another word for actualization is determination. We are falsely led to believe that our DNA is determinative, as is our environment. This false dichotomy is the operating principle in the modern school. But if you take a closer look, you will discover 
that this is a rejection and a denial of agency and free will. DNA and environment are important considerations. They can be influential in a sense, but they represent potentiality, not determination. When it comes to human learning, it is about intellectual and moral activity and free will agency, not about the capacities in genes and environment. Begin to disabuse yourself of this false dichotomy now, and if you're able to commit to your responsibility, you will know it for what it is at the end of this course. You will discover that this course is different in form in that it expects you to do the interior cultivation necessary for the acquisition of the liberal arts and that the content is flowing from the Aristotelian moderate realism. The reason this is different is that the modern school rejects the 2400 year tradition of Aristotelian thought and this course counts on it. Hopefully, what all this means will be clear by the end of the course. There's a great potential in this class, but it will not be determinative. You will. Your success or failure will be primarily on you, and that is different enough to be shocking. But it is also liberating if you have the character to embrace it. I would like to leave you with this quote from Aristotle as a summary of our most important takeaway from the Emperor's New Clothes and for our work on logic. And I quote, the high-minded man must care more for the truth than for what people think, end quote. This is difficult in the cancel culture, but it's still our job. In our next class, we'll talk about the roadblocks that may prevent us from doing what we are supposed to do in this course and for our children as we educate them. See you then.